What I look for in a rent to rent property. On this video, I'm gonna break down nine things that I'm on the lookout for when I view a property. Hi, I'm Simon and I specialize in rent to rent property, HMO and SA, and then I use that cash flow to reinvest in assets that I own for the long term. I've done countless rent to rent deals now, I've plowed that into purchases, and I'm helping as many people do the same. So if that sounds good, hit the subscribe button right now and join me every single week for the best rent to rent content you're gonna find anywhere on YouTube. Disclaimer, I promise you that. Comment below if you agree, or if you don't agree, <laughs> it's all good. So on this video, I'm gonna break down nine key things that I look for when I'm looking for a rent to rent property. And I'm gonna focus on the condition, okay? Things that would scare me off, things that I would like, and this is gonna apply whether you're doing HMO, rent to HMO, or SA. Because if you follow me, you will know that 90% of rent to rent is the same whether you're doing rent to HMO or rent to SA. And I personally believe you've got to do both, okay? You've got to diversify, you can't rely on one. Hey, if I was just doing one when COVID struck, I probably would have been wiped out. Instead, we've managed to scale. So let's get straight into this. You've managed to get a lead, you're going to see the property, or maybe you're looking on right move and you can actually assess some of these online to save yourself time. Number one, bathrooms, okay? And this is a sort of a two-factor scenario. First thing is the amount of bathrooms is important. You know, more bathrooms will be better, naturally. The second thing is the condition. You want modern, clean bathrooms. So if I go into a property or if I'm on right move and I can see an avocado bathroom suite, uh -uh. that property is not for me. Number two, and it's similar, it's kitchens. The kitchen is the hub, it's the heart of the property and therefore you need to make sure you've got a good kitchen. I should also state that one of the main reasons bathrooms and kitchens are important is they're expensive to put right. We're not gonna put a new bathroom or kitchen in a property, okay? So we need to inherit them in good shape. So kitchens, we want modern kitchens, you know, solid flooring, good cabinets. Make sure you look inside your cupboards because sometimes it's the inside that takes the wear and tear. The last thing we want is cupboards that are all rotten and damp and have just been totally trashed because that's gonna make it tricky for us to, to get it in the right place. So look for kitchens, you want modern kitchens. Now they don't have to be the best kitchens in the world. And top tip, sometimes what you can do is you can just change the doors or I've got a really good connection now to wrap kitchens. So you can actually wrap a kitchen now, um, you know, like you would wrap a car or you see these guys doing Playstations and that and completely change the color and the vibe of the kitchen for a fraction of what it would cost to repair the lot. Also, top tip, bathrooms and kitchens, okay, you can add about 10 to 20% in terms of how they look by changing the floor and painting them. So if you've got a kitchen or bathroom that doesn't flow, get the floor screeded and put a nice new vinyl and that should help. Number three is flooring. So I'm talking about carpets, hard flooring, tiles, you want to make sure that these are on a top, top level. Now, if you go in a property and I see that there's brand new carpets, that is a big plus. If not, what I'm looking for is I'm looking to see if a normal tenant would find these carpets acceptable or whether the landlord would need to replace or clean them anyway. I only ever change carpets that I think I just didn't like the color, or they were okay, but I wanted better. If these carpets would need changing for any tenant, please don't pay for them, make sure the landlord pays for them, or that you at least come to some sort of contribution arrangement. 
In terms of hard flooring, you know, if you've got any properties with cracked tiling or ripped vinyl, it's not too expensive just to screed it over and put some hard flooring, whether it be LVT or vinyl. But once again, this could add massive value to the feel of the property. The fourth thing I'm looking for is the walls, okay? And you know, you've got certain properties that are wood chipped or they've got really ugly wallpaper on. And nine times out of 10, you will be able to just paint over these in a brilliant white and they will fade into, you know, fade into the depths of the room. Of course, if you've got wood chip throughout the whole property, is it gonna be a top high-end professional property? Maybe not, but it could potentially work if you switch up your target, maybe to students, for example. Remember, not all your properties need to be high-end, and in terms of your target market, sometimes if you see a property that's a bit tired, it might work for ex-tenant. The key thing for you is just knowing how to match them because then that will allow you to do more deals. I never ever plaster a rent to rent, never done it. I have had to strip a few rooms and I've, I've done um, lining paper, which works at about half the price of, of fresh plaster. Other than that, paint and decorate, nice feature walls, do your best and it will make a big difference. Number five is appliances. So is there a washing machine? Is there a dryer? Is there a fridge freezer? You know, is it in good shape? Sometimes I've actually inherited properties with TVs. You know, if there's an electric shower, how's it feeling? How's it looking? These are the type of things that sometimes are overlooked. And it's not till you get the keys and you open the fridge and you realize, ah, oh, it stinks, it needs replacing, that it dawns on you. And then it's a bit awkward for you then to go back to the landlord. So when you're looking at the property, do an appliance check and have a look at the standard and then have that conversation once, only once, you've agreed on the rent and the term. And I've got a video where I break down the exact steps of how to get a rent to rent deal. And what I will do is I'll put a link below so you can check that out after this video. One extra thing on appliances is don't scrimp and save. If you're gonna buy them, get on AO.com. 200, 250 pounds are good figure for a fridge, freezer, tumble dryer, um, washing machine, a piece, even for a TV. Get the guarantee, the warranty and all that, and then you can sit back and relax knowing you've got good stuff. One thing I have seen with a lot of landlords, by the way, is that if they are leaving the white goods in, sometimes it's in good faith and they won't want to be responsible for them. And that's fine. You know, if you're inheriting stuff and it goes wrong, then you, you get permission, replace it, and then you would own the new one, but at least you know, you've know you saved a bit of money at the start. Number six, furniture. Particularly in HMOs, you may inherit some items of furniture. And there's two things that you wanna consider. The first thing is, is there anything that you can keep that can save you money? So if there's sofas or a wardrobe that you can keep, um, a common one I find is some rooms will have built-in storage, so that means I don't have to buy a wardrobe. And I'll have a checklist, and I'll look at the furniture I can keep, and then I can then process my costs. The second thing is, furniture you can't keep, what are you going to do with? Now, the optimum scenario is the landlord will remove and dispose of it. The second thing is if the landlord's not open to that, you can offer to potentially dispose of it on, on their behalf, you know, help them out. Um, but it will come at a cost because it can be quite expensive to get rid of stuff like that. But one thing's for sure, do not keep any furniture that's like, eh, do not. Do not keep mismatched furniture. Get rid of it. Some landlords will be precious on the furniture that you don't want to keep. So imagine a five bed HMO and they've got furniture that they're happy with. They don't want to get rid of it. And in theory, if you replace it, then you would have to then donate your furniture to them at the end of the agreement. Typically, I don't get too caught up in this. I try and, you know, let them know, look, this furniture is not good enough and we'll cross that bridge in five years because the fact of the matter is, 
If I buy furniture for a house in five years, it's probably gonna be on its way out anyway. So they probably can have it. But as I said, number six, furniture. If you can keep it, great. If you can't, get rid of it and replace. If you're finding this useful, smash the subscribe button right now. And any questions you've got on anything covered in this video, comment below. I check every single day. Number seven is parking. This is a key one. Properties with parking come at a premium. So if you've got off-road parking, that's a big advantage, especially for professionals. I don't know about you, but there's always a professional that is adamant they won't park their car on on-street parking. And I feel their pain. They've got some brand new car. They don't want it on a, a, a terrace street. Now look, if you've got everything else going for it, they might be willing to do that. But if you can get off-road parking, great. If it's permit parking and they can apply for a permit, that can sometimes be better than just standard on-road parking, for sure. Um, but if you're seeing a property and you have to park on a different road, or it's on a main road and there's no parking, or it's an apartment and there's no parking for, say, SA, that is a big, big red flag. You need parking. And if you're in a bigger city like London, that will come at even more of a premium. Number eight is electrics and plumbing. And this is uber important because this is the lifeblood of the property. At the end of the day, you can have it looking as good as you want, but if there's no hot water or if the electrics keep chipping, you're gonna have a big issue. So you wanna check the boiler, find out how old it is, find out if it's got a recent gas cert, and if not, get that done. Also, look at getting a service of the boiler done as well, just to keep it in optimum condition. Another bonus that's often overlooked is a thermostat. So if I see a modern hive thermostat, that's a big plus, because I can also get the access to that to cap and control the bills. Okay, this is something that I highly recommend. So you can get a hive where you've got an app and then you can also check on the status of the heating and make sure that it's off when people are out and all that kind of stuff as well. But yeah, look, plumber, what's the condition? Look at the fuse box, get an EICR done to make sure that it's all legal and ready. Top tip, in the agreement, you should not be responsible for the boiler or the mains electrics, okay? So worst case scenario, the landlord would have to replace these anyway but it's just one more issue. I recently had a deal where actually the landlord replaced the boiler um, as I was doing my refurb. So it's a brand new refurb, brand new boiler they put in, they funded, and now we don't need to worry. We've got it for five years and we can just crack on. Last but not least, and I know Mike will like this one, it's often overlooked, but curb appeal, okay? You know, first impressions are everything. I actually had a scenario where I saw somebody took on a property that was essentially in a estate, okay? And tenants, even though it looked nice inside, tenants just did not like it. They did not like it. It was in this big um, block of apartments. They did not like it. So curb appeal, ask yourself, would you wanna live here? Okay, would you want to live here? Has it got a garden, an outdoor space? You know, is it neat and tidy? And obviously this can be pretty expensive. I've actually got a deal with, I think it's got about one and a half acres of land. <laughs> and it, it, it takes so much to maintain this stuff. But I had a conversation with the landlord. And I was like, look, I'll sort it, but you're gonna have to fund that. But then we, we invested money clearing out the whole front drive, getting rid of the shrubs and stuff that we didn't need so that it's now got the full parking. First impressions do really count. Be careful of big gardens. If a property's got a big garden, make sure that your rent, your offer, reflects how much it's gonna take for you to maintain it and then outsource it to a garden. So, those were the nine key things I look for when finding a rent-to-rent -rent property. It applies for SA and HMO. I hope you find it useful. Any questions you've got, comment below. Let me know if I forgot anything. You know, maybe something slipped my mind. I'll see you in the next video and make sure whatever you do, you subscribe right now. See you soon.